This video is sponsored by Factor. A while back I made a video about harvesting the motor and impeller from a broken Dyson vacuum and turning it into a snail blower so that the flow was directed through a nozzle. It turned out that two of these motors had enough thrust to propel an RC plane. This was a fun experiment, but not very practical. A normal propeller does a much better job at generating thrust. So in this video, I'm going to take these Dyson motors off the plane and use them for something much more practical, which is a new 3D printed sawdust collection system for my CNC machine. A few years ago, I made a video about 3D printing a cyclone separator that used a shop vac for the suction. This separator has served me well over the past few years. Not only have I used it for CNC dust collection, but I also used it a ton during my Boston Whaler restoration, mostly for cleaning up gel coat and fiberglass dust. I've also used it a lot for just cleaning up random messes around the house. This time around, I'm going to try and improve the cyclone separator design and build the Dyson motors into the whole assembly so that I won't have to use a separate shop vac. Before we start on the new design, let's talk about how cyclone separators work. So the vacuum sucks in air and creates a low pressure in the whole thing. This makes air and dust flow in through the tube. One key thing to keep in mind is that the bucket is sealed off so that no outside air can flow in. This prevents any air or dust from getting sucked up from the bucket into the vacuum. When the air enters the cone from the side, it spins around like a tornado. Since solids are heavier than air, they get flung outwards due to centrifugal force and spiral down into the bucket. The air is more immune from the centrifugal force than the dust, so it peels away from the walls and spirals upwards to the vacuum. And no, the cyclone separator was not invented by James Dyson. It's been used for industrial applications for ages. So my old cyclone seemed to work great, but there were a few improvements I wanted to make. First of all, it seemed kind of short and squat compared to most other cyclone separators out there. So I wanted to make it taller. Also, the hole on the top was just flush with the lid. Apparently, extending the tube down into the cone a little bit can improve performance. I designed this new version in Onshape, so you know what that means. All the CAD data lives in the cloud, and I made it publicly accessible. All you have to do to access it is sign up for a free Onshape account and click the link in the description. Then you can easily download it or make whatever changes you want. This is super useful, because let's say your hose is smaller than mine, which it probably is. In this case, you can simply find the sketch that drives this dimension and change it to whatever you want. Any dimension can be customized as easily as that. Pretty sweet. So let's start the build. I printed the main cone part on my FlashForge Guider 3 Plus. This printer has a very large print volume, so it allowed me to make the cone much bigger than the last one. It's 15 inches tall. I printed the inlet tube separately and glued it in place. The inside surface finish wasn't bad, but I wanted to fill in all the little FDM lines to make it as aerodynamic as possible. So first, I roughed up the surface with sandpaper and then spread epoxy-based fairing compound everywhere. After that cured, I sanded it smooth. To give it a glossy surface finish, I painted on a layer of epoxy as kind of like a glaze on a donut. Cyclone separators aren't 100% effective. Some particles will always get through the cyclone, so I'm adding an air filter before the Dyson motors to remove any remaining dust particles. This here is the filter box being printed on my Snapmaker. FDM prints are rarely airtight, and all these need to be, so to fill in any gaps, I gave it a coating of polyurethane. This part here sits on top of the air filter. It also got the polyurethane spray. I used my good old Stepcraft CNC router to cut some 8th inch acrylic for the top of the cyclone, and some quarter inch ply as a deck that the Dyson motors will sit on top of. This is the last job I ever used my old cyclone separator for. It served me well, that's for sure. I used some silicone to glue the Dyson motor holder deck onto the top piece that sits over the filter. That also got screwed into place with a bunch of M3 screws. The polyurethane didn't seem like it was sealing the prints very well, so I gave them a few more coats of whatever I could find laying around. I'm using the same bucket for the new one, so I took the old cyclone off the bucket lid. I had a razor blade stuck through the side to cut up larger pieces of foam that were too big to fall down into the bucket. After that, I mounted the bucket lid to the new cyclone, but I ended up having to remove the lower mounting plate and replace it with a new wooden one. Ugh. Here's the acrylic lid from the top of the cyclone. The lid got glued and screwed to the bottom side of the filter holder. And then that whole thing got glued and screwed onto the top of the cyclone. Here are the Dyson motors straight off of my airplane. They just fit right into the holes in the plywood deck. These motors get turned on by just connecting power, which usually makes a big spark. So to try and prevent the switches from welding themselves together, I made an anti-spark resistor that you just have to switch on before switching the motors on. Seems to work pretty well. I glued this box onto the top. The plan was to line the walls with foam to help suppress the noise from the vacuum motors. And then this lid with exhaust holes on the top caps it off. I'm using an automotive cabin air filter which just sits on the top of the filter box. And then the whole motor assembly goes on top of that. With the whole stack together it looks like this. Very top heavy. I'm powering the motors off of this fat 24 volt DC power supply. Upon powering it up for the first time, the Dyson motors were doing that over RPM protection thing they do when the airflow is restricted too much. I wasn't exactly sure why, but one suspicion I had was that the abrupt edge of the intake was causing some turbulence and blocking airflow. 
To fix this, I designed some bell mouth flared intake pieces and SLA printed them on the Formlabs Form 3 Plus. This printer has a super high resolution, so I didn't need to do any sanding or anything like that to get a super smooth surface finish. I made two of them and just glued them over the intake holes. From the high-speed camera, we can see that the flow now doesn't make any abrupt angle changes, which is good. Tough to say if that's what was really causing the problem, but when I reassembled the whole thing to test it out, it did seem to help. I think I might have also gotten rid of some of the foam inside, which probably made a bigger difference. So the point of using the Dyson motors instead of a shop vac was to make it more compact and quieter. Here's a noise comparison of the shop vac versus the new one that was recorded on a microphone with fixed levels, so that there's no auto adjustment going on. You can clearly hear that it's a bit quieter. Still pretty loud, but definitely an improvement. I printed this nozzle attachment that I can use for manually vacuuming up stuff. Finally, it's time for some cyclone separator testing. I did a bunch of lines of green dye to see if any made it through the cyclone and into the filter. The bucket here definitely has some green in it. Let's see if there's any in the filter now. I don't see anything. There's a little piece of dust right there, but there's no green. Amazing. It does kind of seem like stuff is getting stuck in the cyclone though, and it's not really going down into the bucket as quickly as it should. After that, it was time for some high speed footage from the Freefly Wave camera and some super bright LED lights so that we can crank up the frame rate. Then I sucked up some fat lines of sawdust. It is absolutely incredible how fast this sawdust is going. This is shot at 1440 frames a second, and it still looks like it's going fast on screen. It's cool how you can clearly see the speed increase towards the top of the cyclone as the moment of inertia decreases. Also, from this view, you can see that the stuff coming out of the tube is going much faster than the stuff in the middle of the cyclone. I think it would be better if I could figure out a way to keep the velocity higher. Here you can see there's some sawdust clinging to the lid closer to the center. Maybe this stuff would be getting sucked up into the vacuum if it weren't for the protruding down tube in the middle. Seems like it's working pretty well. Here's an awesome shot. You can see how there's a low pressure area around the rim of the opening, and the sawdust is flowing up and around it. Super interesting. You know what sucks down food faster than this tube sucks down sawdust? It's my mouth when it's eating factor meals. With summer in full swing, the last thing I want to spend my time doing is going to the grocery store and preparing food. Now that I signed up for factor, I get fresh never frozen meals delivered straight to my door. That way I can spend more of my time enjoying the sunshine. It's really not even a compromise, because these meals are chef prepared and dietitian approved, so they taste great and make you feel great. If you have a vacation planned, you can easily pause your subscription at any time. Or, you can do what I did and just throw your meals in the cooler and bring them with you. No microwave? No problem. Just leave them in the sun for a while and they'll get nice and warm. These meals are all pre-cooked, which makes preparation a breeze. All solar powered. Didn't even have to do anything. It's just ready to go. Just slap it in the sun. Zucchini chunks and some beef. It was really good. Damn, I gotta pour the sauce on it now. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, too much solar pressure. Ooh, yeah. Mmm. You don't even need to heat them up if you don't want to. They actually turned out to be super convenient for camping so long as you have a cooler to store them in. Much easier than having to cook on the tailgate. If you want to save time and effort on food while simultaneously enjoying restaurant level delicious meals, then I would highly recommend signing up for Factor. Head to Factor75.com or click on the link below and use code RCTESTLIGHT50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Wow! The tube I'm using here is far from ideal. All the ribs inside have a lot of aerodynamic drag, and it's a stretchy tube so that when you accidentally choke the vacuum, it contracts and pulls your vacuum off the table. So I should probably look for another tube. When it did fall off the table, the acrylic cracked, so I had to cut a thicker lid out of 1 quarter inch acrylic. After that, I used it for some carbon fiber cutting. It seemed to do a good job of removing the carbon fiber dust. And I also used it for a bunch of foam cutting. Foam is tough for a cyclone separator because it's so lightweight, and for that reason, the centrifugal forces don't pull it out of the air as well. Anyhow, it sure did collect a lot of it, and it's kind of a pain to deal with because it's super staticky, so it sticks to everything. To empty the bin, I just put a garbage bag over it and flip it upside down. So I just emptied the bucket here, and I'm gonna see if I can fill it up by just vacuuming around the house. Definitely not the most ergonomic vacuum for this sort of thing. Maybe in the future I'll have to build my next generation vacuum into a backpack so that it's more practical for general vacuuming purposes. Okay, so this is after vacuuming around the house for about an hour. Let's see. Ugh, there's hair in there. Yeah, it doesn't look, <laughs> it doesn't look amazing. <laughs> 
dust probably gets through the cyclone when the tube gets choked because then the, the air stops swirling and it'll probably just go straight up. This is why a lot of nozzle attachments have notches in them. It's so that the flow can't be completely blocked. The cyclone needs the air flowing to work properly. So maybe I should have made the notches bigger. All the bigger stuff doesn't go through the hole. It kind of gets caught right there. The impeller blades seem to have accumulated some dust particles after running for a while. So that might show that the filter isn't 100% effective at removing super small stuff. Or maybe there's just some outside air leaking in after the filter. Not sure. Okay, so now let's see how much stuff we collected. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a decent amount of crap. That was all on my floor. <laughs> a lot of people will probably ask why not just use a shop vac for this sort of thing. I guess the best answer is that you wouldn't be watching a video about a shop vac. But also, the cyclone geometry is much better at separating particles out of the air than a standard shop vac design. So ultimately, you'll end up going through fewer filters or dust bags or whatever you're using. After quite a bit more CNC cutting and vacuuming out my very dirty car, there really didn't appear to be all that much stuff in the bucket. Gosh darn, look at all that schmutz. This goes to show that you really don't need all that much dust collection volume unless you're CNC cutting away lots of material like with my foam projects. So judging by looking at the filter, my cyclone separator isn't perfect. I think the larger size made it work better with bigger dirt particles but maybe a little worse with smaller particles. It's tough to design for this because I obviously want it to work with all sizes of particles. This is where a multi-stage design can come in handy. This is what Dyson is doing. So one of the main reasons why these vacuums work so well is that they have two stage dust collection systems. So there are two discrete compartments in the dust collection bin that actually are sealed independently and collect dust. You have the outer side for all the big chunks and then you have the inner side for the fine chunks. And you have two separate seals here that seal each individual compartment. So the motor is pulling a vacuum on each section independently. This is kind of like the equivalent of having two discrete cyclone separators working in series. And it's those two separators working in series that make the Dyson as good as it is as removing dust from the air. And then you have the filter in the back. That can be thought of just like a third stage that catches the super, super fine dust that made it through the two cyclones. I cut this one open. Let's take a look inside. It's actually a little bit different than the working Dyson I have. A vacuum is pulled by the motor on this side here. And then the dirt and debris flows through here and it spins around inside this collection chamber. Now this is kind of like its own little cyclone separator, except it's not like a cone shape, it's just a, just a round barrel. So the big chunks of dirt fall around the outside here, they rest on the bottom of the lid, the lid opens like this, and then the rest of the air with the smaller dust included in it goes through this mesh net. And then once it makes it through that mesh net, it goes up into all these little mini cyclones that are all in parallel. Now these are kind of what give Dyson their cyclone separator brand feel. They make them visible on all their vacuums. So let's have a look inside this thing. I cut it straight in half. <coughs> ah, dust. So like I said, the dust goes through the mesh and then it goes up into this area here. There's a cavity where the air and dust can flow around the outside of all these little cyclones and there's holes in the side of the cyclones. They're like these little square holes. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but those are the intakes for all the cyclones. This one is cut perfectly in half. You can see it right here. So the dust flows through the mesh up here and then it enters the cyclones through these little square holes in the side. Then from there, the air spins around. It does its cyclone separator thing. Um, and the dust falls down here and into this inner collection chamber. Now this inner collection chamber is independently sealed off from the, the coarse dust collection chamber. That's what I was showing you here earlier. This is the outer chamber and this is the inner dust collection chamber. So after the air goes through the little cyclones, it then gets collected into this inner dust collection chamber that's sealed off from the bottom. So the dust falls down, the cleaner air then spins around, does its cyclone thing, and exits up through that little hole in the top of the cyclone, and then goes over here to this filter. It enters the filter here through these tubes in the tops of the cyclones, and it goes down up through this little slit in the top of the filter, and into the middle of the filter. That collects the finest dust particles. So the air travels out from the inside of the filter to the outside, and then, you see these, are, these go together, so then the air is in this chamber here, and then it gets sucked through this hole and out into the motor. That's where the vacuum is created. That's kind of a complex path that the air travels through the vacuum, but it's kind of cool to see if we cut it away like this. Pretty clever design. What's more clever is how they managed to injection mold this in so few parts. 
So maybe with my next cyclone separator project, I'll do a multi-stage design more like the Dysons. I already did this in the past with this version here, that had discrete dust collection chambers all within the main bucket. But the issue with this one was that all three cyclones were fairly similar in size, so the second two in the series weren't helping all that much. Yo, check out this crazy static. Wow, wee, look at that, I'm just attracting sawdust. That's incredible. It's not even stopping either, it's still going. Wow, it's polarized like iron shavings. That's nuts, I've never seen that before. You're supposed to ground these things so that they don't spark and blow up. Oh, I should probably do that. I'll leave you with some high-speed footage and Colin's Cyclone song. Thanks for watching, bye. A mighty cyclone. To collect the dust with the cyclone. Makes me want to see and see all night long. <laughs> Going hard when I turn the shop back on. And it moves that dust like a cyclone. Just like a cyclone.